Those of us who've done a few laps around the sun will remember the VCR format wars of the 1980s when the superior Betamax format from Sony competed with and was ultimately beaten by the VHS format. Back in the day, video libraries, which were mom and pop independent businesses in that pre-blockbuster era, had two separate sections of the store and they had to buy all the big movies in two different formats. It wasn't on a deal. The problem of incompatible systems from competing manufacturers is one that continues to cause endless problems for us, the consumers. Case in point, Apple's woes in Europe with their proprietary lightning port. The lack of compatibility is especially evident in the camera market, where most of the big brands have their own proprietary raw format, each signified by a different file extension. .CR2 or CR3 for Sony, RAF for Fuji, NEF for Nixon, ARW or DSC for Sony, ORF for Olympus, etc, etc. It's not just the file extension that is different, of course. Each camera manufacturer encodes their raw files in a slightly different way, and this is a big headache for software companies developing raw editing software. Adobe, Capture One, DxO, On One, and the other developers have to ensure their software supports the various raw formats or they deny themselves a sizable potential customer base. The problem of incompatible RAW formats becomes a particularly big issue for owners of Fujifilm cameras. Fuji uses a kind of sensor in most of their cameras that's completely different to all of the other camera manufacturers. And while the differences between a Nikon and a Canon RAW file are relatively small, the differences between a Nikon and a Fuji are huge. These differences, when looked at dispassionately on a balance sheet, meant many companies opted out of support for Fuji cameras. The unconventional RAW format wasn't the only reason that many photo processing app developers chose to ignore the format. With just 5.8% market share, as opposed to Canon's 46.5% or Sony's 26%, it just wasn't worth the effort for many of them. Even the mighty Adobe with an estimated 70% software market share only bothered to address the issue of Fuji RAW files in 2021. What this all made crystal clear was that we needed a unified lossless file format, a standard file type that could be edited in any photo processing app, one that sidestepped the issues of inter-brand compatibility. No need to invent it though, because yes, it already exists. It's called the Digital Negative Specification, and in fact, it's been around for decades. I am, of course, talking about the DNG format, launched by Adobe all the way back in 2004 and released by them as an open source, royalty-free, universal raw format that any company, hardware or software could adopt. DNGs are the near perfect solution for digital photographers in the modern era because they mean never having to worry about software compatibility issues. But before we talk about the workflow to enable all this, let's outline some of the pros and cons of DNG files starting with the advantages. One, like the original RAW file, DNGs are lossless. Therefore, you can retain that extra light and color information contained in a RAW file when converting to DNG. Two, DNGs are about 20% smaller than RAW files. Consider how many photos you have in your archive and that 20% probably adds up to a considerable saving on hard drive space. Combine that with the fact that unlike RAW files, you can use compression software to further reduce that file size if necessary, and it can make substantial space storage savings, particularly on image archives. Three, DNGs can be edited by all photo editors. This gives you the freedom to move between different applications if you want, safe in the knowledge you'll still be able to edit your lossless image data. Four, any editing changes you make are stored within the DNG itself, or your edits are recorded in the image's header. This is important because when you edit a native RAW file, 
the app stores all of your edits within a separate .xmp sidecar file. So for every image, you actually have two files, the raw and the sidecar. It's much more convenient to have everything contained within a single file. Well, that's the good stuff. Are there any disadvantages to switching to DNG? Honestly, no, but there are a couple of things to consider. Firstly, while DNGs are lossless files, it is possible you'll lose some data from the dynamic range during the conversion process if you're not using a good DNG converter. Personally speaking, I've never noticed any differences between RAW and DNG, but some apps handle that conversion better than others. Secondly, you might lose some metadata during the conversion process, most notably GPS information. You can always add the GPS metadata back in after conversion if necessary, but it's worth bearing in mind if geolocation is central to your archiving. That's the background, let's talk practicalities. All of the well-known RAW editors have DNG conversion built in, but it's important to clarify that there are two different types of conversion. The first type of conversion creates a facsimile of the RAW file in a DNG format. That is a clean DNG. The second type of conversion does some baseline edits to the RAW file and bakes them into the file. This is a linear DNG. Both types of DNG are still lossless file formats, but if you want to keep an original file with as few processing changes as possible, then you need to do a clean, uncorrected DNG conversion. The cheapest and most effective way of converting your raw files to clean DNG is to use Adobe's free conversion tool, which is available in both Mac OS and Windows flavors. I'll link to the files down below. To use that converter, you simply point at a directory full of images and it will batch convert them all to DNG. In the preferences of that app, you can choose to embed a JPEG preview in the file to enable lossy compression, though that kind of defeats the point somewhat, and to embed the original raw file which is future-proof, but also takes up much more space. Once converted, you can then import those clean DNGs into your raw editor of choice and process them just as you would any other raw file. Alternatives to Adobe's DNG Converter are three open source apps, Raw Therapy, UF Raw, and Earth and View, all of which will accomplish the same task. Capture One Pro, DxO Photo Lab, and On One Photo Raw can also convert to clean DNG by exporting with all the processing options turned off. The second type of conversion is called a linear DNG. This is when during the conversion process, you apply some baseline corrections to account for camera lens imperfections or image noise. Think of this as a kind of super raw. I've tested linear DNGs in four apps I have on my Mac, DxO Pure Raw and Photo Lab, and Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw. You can process images in batches using the new workflow function in Adobe Bridge, which can be used for free, or you can simply open the image in Camera Raw and use the Enhance option with or without noise removal. Ditto Lightroom. DxO Pure Raw is a batch raw processor. You can simply load it up with raw files and it will convert them all to linear DNG files with color, camera, lens, and noise correction all added according to your preferences. Alternatively, you can just open the file in DxO Photo Lab and use the DNG export option with the baseline correction selected. Personally speaking, I'm more than happy to work with linear DNG files produced by DxO Pure Raw as my baseline lossless image files. My workflow goes like this. I transfer the files off the SD card and onto my photo drive. I use the Hazel app on my Mac to automate this and it puts all the images in a date stamped folder called RAWs. I then drag the contents of that folder into Pure Raw and I convert them all in a batch and go and make myself a coffee while I'm waiting. I love having Pure Raw do the raw demosaicing camera and lens corrections and noise removal. So I do that by default on all of my images. I then either archive the original rules on my NAS drive or keep them on the photo drive in their own folder. Now that the images are corrected and in DNG format, I import them all into Adobe Lightroom Classic where I add my IPTC metadata along with the GPS coordinates using the map module. I can now begin full post-processing of the photographs 
safe in the knowledge that I can transfer the DMGs off into any third-party app I like. It's a great system that deals with all sorts of potential inconveniences, and it does so in a way that only benefits my photography. If you've been dealing with the hassle of multiple raw file formats, and would prefer to have one single common photo format, then DNG is definitely a powerful option. And that will do us for this video. Do you convert your raw files to DNG or do you prefer to keep them au naturel? What do you convert them with? Please do let me know in the comments section down below. If you got value from this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video and drone related content from me in your YouTube feed. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.